Hello and welcome to day 67 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the study I'm doing today is by John Francis Murphy. It's called An Autumn Landscape. And it's a very interesting piece by John Murphy. I wouldn't be surprised if it's, you know, early 1880s. Um, Anyway, last, uh, I believe the uh, last John Francis Murphy that we were doing, I was reading from the book A History of American Tonalism, 1880-1920 to by David A. Cleveland. It's an awesome book. Highly recommend getting it if you're into tonalism. It's worth the money. It's, I've, I own two copies, a studio copy, and I have one here in my office at home. Anyway, I'm going to read, uh, reading from page uh, 211, chapter 4. Um, by the early 1880s, Murphy's middle period style was well established, featuring motifs and orientation derived from Inessa's notion of civilized landscape. Much of Murphy's imagery originated in 1877 when the artist spent a year working and sketching on a rural New Jersey farm as a guest of the Chicago family of A.S. Rohrbach. Over the years he spent helping out on the farm, he made numerous sketches of buildings, stone walls, wooden fences, trees, and plants. These drawings became kind of a memory bank of motifs on which he drew and which appeared in his paintings from around 1878. When he abandoned his early Hudson River style and embarked on his first mature period as a tonalist, relying on the detailed sketches he'd made on the Rohrbach's farm, these landscape are th synthetic constructs, carefully orchestrated arrangements of landscape ornamentation. Murphy has been quick to state his artistic point of view in 1881 to a purchaser of one of his landscapes, claiming it represented no particular place, it's a composition only, as are all my pictures. By 1885, when Murphy won the second Halligren Prize at the National Academy for his landscape, tints of a vanished past. Uh, the synthetic or composed landscape painted from memory as well as established among the second generation tonalists. As his biographer Elliot Clark noted of that year, we observe the definite influence of the tonal school based on the French Barbizon sources and Wyant. Ines was painting more and more in the studio. Ines's 1884 retrospective would have demonstrated the point decisively to Murphy and his contemporaries. Actual places were no longer the point. The sense of place and the evocations of individual feeling were the hallmark of the modern landscape. The key to Murphy's success as a tonal stylist was the imposition of his subjective emotion on the arrangement of landscape forms. The low perspective and high horizon in Hillside Farm dramatizes all the foreground elements, elevating the composition from simply picturesque or merely charming, which his work in illustration might have encouraged. Here, in the intuitive sense, the personal mood of the artist is expressed by way, by the way, in which the telling details are orchestrated and imbued with life within a limited range of tonality. It is akin to what Bernard Bernson called ideated sensations which evoke for the viewer a tactile feeling for place or what he described as space composition. It is the art which humanizes the void, making it an enclosed Eden, a domed mansion wherein our higher selves can find an abode. Murphy's composition breathes of its own sultry atmosphere, and that's his unifying element, and so pulses within her life. The kernel of Murphy's expressive style is simplicity, and as with dozens of Murphy's finest toneless colleagues, the style becomes more and more simplified as Murphy's work matures. The exquisitely rendered details in the artist's foregrounds of the early 1880s, the lovingly rendered weeds that filled his early drawings, would gradually disperse in the work of the 1890s to be replaced by stylized paint marks and then evolved even more dramatic and expressive readings of overall mass and form and developing atmosphere in the last decades of Murphy's career. Well, I can say we're getting close to the end. Thanks for joining us for Day 67. 
come back tomorrow for day 68. I'll be here. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can go to landscapepainter.co.nz. There's a lot of uh, good stuff there. And you can also follow my blog from there quite easily. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I want everyone to have a great day and take care. And we will see you tomorrow. Stay out of trouble.